Hello and welcome to the first in my series of video lectures on computer science. In this session we'll be quickly learning the dynamic programming method for solving the 0-1 knapsack problem. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the knapsack problem, a knapsack problem is one where we have some knapsack that has some limited capacity and we have uh, some number of items that we want to put in the knapsack. Each item has some value and some weight. We want to know what items we can put in the knapsack to get the greatest value while not allowing the weight to go over the knapsack's capacity. In the 0-1 knapsack problem, we are only allowed to either put an item wholly in the knapsack or totally not put it in the knapsack. We can't split any items, for example, by putting half an item in the knapsack. That's not allowed. Dynamic programming is a programming technique, just like divide and conquer. When thinking of a dynamic programming technique, we have to ask ourselves if there's any way in which we can work out the problem gradually building up. If we can work out the knapsack problem using smaller capacity knapsacks, using less items, then we can start out with a trivially small knapsack and then slowly build it up to be the original problem size. To do this, we need to have two things. Firstly, we need some base case where we actually know the answer already. In the knapsack problem, we could do this using two base cases. Firstly, if the knapsack's capacity is zero, then obviously the best solution is going to be to put zero items in the knapsack because none of the items will fit in the knapsack. The other possible base case is that if we don't have any items, then obviously the best solution is going to be to put no items in, because we don't have any items. Secondly, we need some rule, as well as our base case, to build up the knapsack to be the size of the original problem. This rules what we're going to be concerning ourselves with in the main part of this session. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a knapsack with a capacity of 5 units. We have 3 items. The first item has a weight of 3 and a value of 5. The second item has a weight of 2 and a value of 3. The third item has a weight of 1 and a value of 4. We now need to fit these items into the knapsack to get the greatest value while not allowing the total weight to go over the capacity of the knapsack. The first thing we need to do is to create two arrays. Both of these arrays need to be the same size. As you can see, across the top we have every number up to the size of the knapsack, 1 to 5. Down the side, we have the number of items plus one. The first row represents having no items. The second row represents having only the first item, and so on, until the last row, which represents having all three of the original items that we started with. The first of these arrays is called the V array. Each cell in this array represents its own knapsack problem. The cell that has a green circle around it, for example, represents a knapsack problem where we have a total capacity of three, and have just one item, the first item that we started with, that has a value of 5 and a weight of 3. The purpose of dynamic programming is to fill in this table until we get to the bottom right cell in the table, which is a knapsack problem with the capacity of 5 using all three items, which is identical to the knapsack problem that we started with. Once we have this cell filled in, then we have the greatest possible value that we can put in the knapsack. But this does not tell us what the best combination of items is. That's the purpose of the other array, called the keep array, as we shall see later. So let's start with the base case. We already said that it's obvious that if you have no items, obviously the best solution is just to put no item in, no matter what the size of the knapsack is. So we can fill in the first row of the table, because this row represents all the knapsack problems that use no items for various size knapsacks. In the V array, all of these cells will be zero. We have no items, so the best value we can get, no matter what size the knapsack is, is zero. We also fill in zeros at the top of the keep array, for reasons we'll see later. Now we have to work from the top left to the bottom right across the rows. The first cell we'll look at is highlighted now. This is a knapsack problem with a capacity of one using just the first item. The first question we need to ask ourselves is, does the current item fit in the knapsack? The current item has a weight of three, so it doesn't fit. Therefore, the best value we can get with just the first knapsack and just the first item with a capacity of 1 is 0, because we can't put the item in. The same is true for a knapsack with a capacity of 2, because it still won't fit in the knapsack. So we can fill both of these cells in with 0. Now it gets more interesting, because the current item will fit in a knapsack of size 3. Now we have to get two values. The first value is easy, it's just the value in the table above the current value, which, in this case, is 0. The second value is slightly harder to work out. First, take the value of the current item, which is 5. If we include this item in the knapsack, we have zero space left because the weight of the item is 3 and the knapsack capacity is 3. 
Uh, this means our second value is just 5. We would have added something on if there was any space left in the knapsack, which we will see later. Now we compare these two values, 0 and 5, to see which one's higher. Do we get a higher total value if we include the item in the knapsack than if we don't include the item? In this case, obviously, yes we do. We get a value of 5 if we include the item, or 0 if we don't. So we put a 5 in this cell in the V array, and a 1 in the keep array to show that yes we do want to keep this item. The next cell is even more interesting. First, we need to ask ourselves if the current item fits in the knapsack. Obviously, yes it does because the knapsack has capacity 4, so we need to work out our two values. The first value is, again, 0, because that's the value in the cell above it. The second value is more tricky. We take the value of the current item, which is 5, but this time if we include it in the knapsack, then we have some space left over. One unit of space, in fact. So using just the first item, can we fit anything into this one unit of space? This is where the power of dynamic programming comes in handy, because, in fact, we've already worked this out. The one capacity knapsack in the previous row is the answer, and is what we need to add on to the second value. If we include the current item, we get a value of 5 plus whatever we can fit into the remaining space, which in this case is just 0. 5 plus 0 equals 5, so we're comparing 5 against the value in the cell above, 0. Obviously 5 is higher again, so we fill in 5 in the V array and 1 in the keep array. For the last cell in this row, we take this value, the value in the cell above it, and compare it with this value, the value of the current item, plus this value, the best value that can fit in the total remaining space. 5 is greater than 0, so we put a 5 in the V table and a 1 in the keep table. We finished the second row, so let's move on to the third row. First cell. Does the current item fit? No. Copy the value from the cell above. Second cell. Does the current item fit? Yes, a weight of 2 will fit in a knapsack of size 2. Compare the value in the cell above, 0, against the value of the current item, 3. Is there any remaining space if we put this item in the knapsack? No. So we compare 3 against 0. 2 is better, so we want to keep the current item. Put a 3 in the V table, because that's the value of the current item, and a 1 in the keep table. Third cell. Does the current item fit? Yes. Compare the value in the cell above, this time 5, against the value of the current item, 3, plus whatever can fit into any remaining space, which we've already worked out using dynamic programming, 0. Now we're comparing 3 against 5. This time, the value in the cell above, 5, is greater. So we just copy the value from the cell above in the V table, and put a 0 in the keep table. What this basically says is, for a knapsack of size 3, using just the first two items, you get a higher value from not using the second item, just using the first item. The fourth cell, does it fit? Yes. Compare the value above, 5, against the current item's value, 3, plus the maximum value in the remaining space, 0. Again, 5 is greater than 3, so we're best off not using this item. Copy the cell above in the V table, and put a 0 in the keep table. The last cell. Does it fit? Yes. Compare the value above, 5, against the current item's value, 3, plus the maximum remaining value in the remaining space. This time there are 3 units of space left, so we can fit both items in the knapsack. This time we're comparing 8 against 5, and obviously 8's higher, so we do want to use this item. Let's zoom through the third row. First cell. Does it fit? Yes. The value above is 0. Compare that with the value of the item, 4. Yes, we want to use it. Second cell. Does it fit? Yes. The value above is 3. Compare that with the value of the item, 4, plus whatever can fit into the remaining space, which is just 0. 4 is greater than 3, so we do want to use the item. Third column. Yes, it fits, so the value above is 5. The value of the item is 4. The optimal value of the remaining space is 3, so the total we use, if we use this item is 7. 7 is greater than 5, so again, we do want to use this item. Fourth cell. F 4 plus 5 is greater than 5. 9 in V, 1 in keep. Last cell, 4 plus 5 is greater than 8, 9 in V, 1 in keep. Uh, we've now finished both the V and the keep tables. Now we've finished with the V table, we can get rid of that. We're going to use the keep table to determine what the optimal solution is. First, we need two variables. W will represent the remaining weight in the knapsack, and I will represent the current item. We have to go backwards through the items, 3 to 1. So we set I to 3, 
and W to 5, because that's the unused capacity of the knapsack. We need to look at row I, column W in the keep table. If this is a 1, add the item to the knapsack, which we do in this case. Item 3 has a weight of 1, so we take that off W. Now go to item 2 and again look at row I, column W. This time it's a 0, so we don't include this item, we just go to the next one. This time it's a 1, so we reduce W by the weight of item 1, which is 3, and now we've been through all of the items, we're done. We get a 1 in the keep array for items 1 and 3, so that is the optimal solution for this knapsack problem. And that's the dynamic programming solution to the 0-1 knapsack problem, I hope it's been helpful, goodbye!